Bible class, Christ. We welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. We give honor to him and our bishop and pastor, Dr. John T. Leslie Jr. and our first lady, Louise Leslie, in their absence and our assistant pastor, District Elder Robert Taylor and Lady Midlinda Taylor. And now I'll turn it over for a word of prayer with District Elder Taylor, after which we'll hear teaching. And then at the end, we will hear our weekly announcements. District Elder Taylor, over to you. All right. Thank you so much, Lawrence. Let us all pray. Gracious Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you once again for allowing us to be back in Bible class, oh God, to mingle our voices, oh God, in the word of God with your people. And we ask in this evening, Lord, that something will be said to encourage our hearts and strengthen our souls, strengthen our walk with you, Lord. Oh God, remember those who are absent from us this afternoon, this evening. And Lord, we pray your blessings upon, oh God, our pastor and his uh, companion. God, remember those, oh God, who have lost loved ones. Remember those, oh God, who are looking this way for prayer. And Lord, we ask, oh God, that you would help us and strengthen us today, Lord. Oh God, and we shall be strong, save us, and we shall be saved, heal us, and we shall be healed. Lord, we thank you and we give you praise for all things. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. We certainly honor once again to be back in Bible study. We thank God for another day that he has blessed us. And you know, uh, my it's my scripture, it is, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed that because his compassions fail not, but they are new every day, every morning. Great is his faithfulness. We thank the Lord for being so faithful to us and for us because uh, had it not been for the Lord who was on our side, the enemy would have swallowed us up. He would have gotten the best of us. But thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ who have made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. We certainly thank God for each and every one of you who have joined in this afternoon, this evening to uh, for Bible study. And, uh, you know, it's always good to fellowship in the word of God. And uh, we uh, thank God that uh, those of you who have come, I want you to tag somebody. Uh, if you're on Facebook, uh, comment, you know, share, uh, tag somebody, let them know that Church of Jesus Christ Bible study is on the air in Jesus name. Now, uh, we want to, uh, hey, this is, this is, this is kind of funny because, uh, tonight we want to start a new series. Uh, we, we finished with the old series. The old series was, everybody remember, if you remember, just raise your hand, just raise your hand. If you remember the old series. Amen. It was uh, it was building blocks for both time and eternity. And, and keep in mind what I said about that. I, I, it bears being repeated. If we don't make it in time, then we can forget about eternity because time is where we are right now. And we got to make sure what we're doing right now is we're doing that which please God. Uh, and we all we want. I, I believe all of us want to be pleasing in the eyes of God, and we want Him to be pleased with our lives. All right. Now, tonight, uh, we're going to start a new series. And if I could just uh, <clears throat> share my screen with you. Okay. All right. Tonight, we're going to be talking about our inheritance. Our inheritance. Our inheritance. If you remember uh, this past Sunday, for those of you who were in the 1130 service, uh, we preached from this subject, our inheritance. Um, and uh, we want you to know that it belongs to us. Uh, I, I thought it not robbery to uh, present this, uh, not only tonight, but in, in this series, to those who, uh, who missed our 1130 service. Uh, I think it's very important that we know uh, what's ahead of us and what we have uh, coming to us, you know, what the Lord has provided for us. I think it's important that we know this. Uh, we're just not beating the air. We're just not fighting a losing battle. We all, we're always on the winning side with Christ Jesus. You understand? We're always on the winning side. Uh, and because of that, then he has prepared something for us that after this life is over, after we've been raptured out of here, uh, after we go to our new home, uh, we're not just going to something that is uh, that is that is vacant. We're going to something that is occupied, and we're going to be the occupants. We are going to be the occupants. You know, uh, that last series, Building Blocks for Both Time and Eternity, uh, this indestructible, destruct, indestructible structure uh, that we're now building on. Keep in mind that we're not, we're not just, again, we're just not beating the air, but we're working on something. 
And the thing that we're working on is that which is going to last throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. Uh, and so we want to look at our inheritance. It belongs to us. Turn in your Bibles, if you will, to the book of Colossians. The book of Colossians. Colossians. Ephesians. Philippians. Colossians. Right before 1 Thessalonians. Okay. Colossians. And uh, I, I want to, uh, our, our, focus, our focal verse will be verse 12, but uh, I just want to go back to verse number one, just to bring us up to verse number 12. Uh, we're not going to hang on any of these verses, but we just want to get the full context of the, what the scripture is saying to us. Uh, verse number one, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, you can read along with me if you will, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, that's important, by the will of God. Uh, and Timothy is our brother, not by the will of man, but by the will of God. Uh, many people have called themselves to be uh, an apostle or a preacher or a prophet or a prophetess. But uh, unless you've been called that by the will of God, then God is not recognizing that. Verse number two, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, grace be to you. And I'm reading from the King James Version. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which we have all you have all with all the saints for the hope, key verse, one of the key verses, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof you heard before in the word of God the word of truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is in all the world and bringeth forth fruit as it does also in you since the day you heard of it and knew the grace of God in truth. Verse number seven, as you also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister in Christ, who also declared unto you or unto us your love in the spirit, for this cause, for the cause of for, for the cause of those verses listed below, be, uh, previous to this, verse one through eight. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Verse 11 and 12, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which had made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Verse 13, who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. I'll stop right there. But this book of Colossians, as I said on Sunday, and I'll I, I repeat this. And you're going to hear, those of you who were in the 11th service, you're going to hear some uh, information repeated, okay? Uh, but don't let that bother you. But uh, this book of Colossians, as I said, it is rarely preached from, but it's, uh, it has some powerful teaching in it. Because I liken this book, I, I call it the power book of the epistles. It's, it's the power book of the epistles. And, and I liken that unto the book or the gospel of St. John, because both of these books, both St. John and the book of Colossians, both of them speak of the deity of Jesus Christ. Yes, he was, a, he was born, he was laid in the manger. He, he went through all the process that a child goes through. But before he became a baby, he was God. Or should, can I put it like this? Before he became a baby, he is God. From everlasting to everlasting, he's God. So there's never a time when he's not God. Uh, Evangelist Wheeler sometimes repeat this from uh, the late Bishop Norman Wagner, that God can become whatever he wants to become and never ceases to be God. And so uh, here in this book of Colossians, keep in mind that 
uh, Paul, he writes this letter to the Colossian church because he had heard of false teachers infiltrating the church. And, and he's writing to combat the infiltration of these false prophets because they were telling the people, and, and, and this is not just in the book in the church of Colossae, in, in many of the churches that the apostles had discovered and had established, they always spoke of being aware of false prophets and false teaching. Because one of the dangers in our society, as it was in every, each and every other society, is the, the idea of false teaching. Because if you don't receive the truth of the gospel and false teaching instead, you will never be put on the right path. I hope that makes sense. If you always, if you're always looking for something, you're always looking for, you know, and I talk about looking for that new wave to come. And we have to be careful because in this in this present day of age of uh, social media, you know, all of the different platforms, uh, Facebook and and and, and uh, Instagram and 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 uh, what are some of the others? Uh, TikTok. You know, all of these social media platforms, we have to be careful because we're constantly surfing from one platform to the next, one, serve, one, one church service to the next. And all of these church services and all of these platforms, all of them are not telling us the right message. And this is why we have to be careful that we don't get the wrong message. And so in this series of studies, uh, what we want to try to do is to uh, try to list the things. Uh, we want to uh, find out what is an inheritance. You know, what is an inheritance? How does the New Testament inheritance compares with the Old Testament inheritance? Also, uh, what are some of the benefits of us having an inheritance? And finally, what, what we have to look forward to in this inheritance that has been provided for us. Hopefully throughout this series, we'll be able to answer these questions. Uh, but first of all, let's take a look at what is an inheritance? What is an inheritance? Let's see, there we go. Uh, and so uh, an inheritance from the Greek word kleros gives implication of a secured portion or an acquisition heritage, especially from a patrimony. And a patrimony is, is property that has been inherited from one's uh, father or from a male ancestor. That's what a patrimony is. This is what an inheritance is. You know, uh, it's, uh, it's similar to a will or a testament, which uh, from the Greek word diatiki is a contract, especially a divisory will, uh, which, which person who leaves real estate to someone by the will, by, uh, and in the case of a will or a covenant. And so here we have uh, what an inheritance is, what a will or a testament is, and we have this inheritance in Christ Jesus. And so how does this reflect to us? How does this relate to us? How does it relate to us? You know, uh, first of all, uh, just to say that one of the uh, underlying things that uh, that in the Church of Colossae that Paul was dealing with was the fact that uh, he had to discount uh, the false teaching so that the people at Colossae could understand exactly what their inheritance is, and and not just the inheritance, but all of the other teaching that comes along with uh, the church. Uh, Paul is explaining, and one of his cohorts, or one of his uh, one of his partners in in the gospel, uh, Epaphras, they the two of them were defending what the false teachers were teaching. And so, uh, throughout this teaching, we intend to gaze from uh, this series is to understand and to know what God has prepared for us in the church, which is in heaven right now as we speak. He's already prepared this inheritance for us. He's already prepared. Remember, Jesus said, I'm going away to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you might be also. And so it's not taking him 2,000 years to prepare this place either. 
We're not going to receive mansions that we go in, uh, open the doors and go in these mansions. No, we are the church, the invisible body of Christ. We are the habitation of God. God is living amongst us. And even now, even now, God, we are the habitation of God. God is living amongst us. So we want to discover this. However, we will receive or, or how we how or have received a portion of it here on earth. And right now we have as the inheritance, we have a down payment. The down payment is the, the, the gift of the Holy Ghost. Right now we have it as a gift. But when we cross over, when the rapture occurs, we will then have salvation as a possession. So in this letter to the Colossian church, chapters 1 and verses 5 to 12, uh, where we begin, the fact that Jesus had to uh, had to uh, such an enormous price to provide this gift to the human family is something that we cannot afford to take for granted. He paid an enormous price. You know, it just didn't come on a flowery bed of ease, but Jesus had to die. He had to provide he had to he had to provide himself a sacrifice in order to for mankind to go back and be uh privy to the tree of life and in our case in essence eternal life you know throughout uh throughout our lives our lifetime um you know generally you know our ancestors our parents grandparents and all you know uh Typically, uh, whatever they possess with, while they're living, uh, some do this, not all, not all, uh, you know, and, you know, sometimes, you know, we, we, we procrastinate in doing uh, things such as uh, making up a will, you know, writing out something that, uh, that defines uh, what happens to uh, your stuff when you leave here. And, and children, on the other hand, uh, when their parents or their grandparents die, they want to know, well, you know, was there anything left for me? Because if it was, then, you know, anything with my name on it, uh, then I, rightfully it belongs to me. I remember some years ago I was listening to uh, 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 Robert, Robert W. Shambach, and uh, he was saying that, uh, I think it was down in Texas, that uh, there were all kinds of in, uh, uh, property that was left uh, for people, people who had died. They had left all kinds of property down there. And he said he had run so many revivals down in Texas that uh, he went to the courthouse and he was looking for anything that had anything similar to his name on it. Shambach, Robach, anything, anything that sounded like Shambach. He said he was looking for it because uh, he didn't know whether or not somebody had left him something. But generally, when you when you think about an inheritance, uh, you think about you know has 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 anything been left to me? Well, uh, when we deal with the church per se, there's a whole lot that has been left to us, and have been left for us. And so, uh, in these particular verses that we've we've read from the book of Colossians, uh, Paul shows us and informs the church at Colossae that the New Testament stresses on the life of practical loyalty in the brotherhood, which never becomes a mere moralism. Okay? The life and the expectancy amongst the brotherhood in the church, it never becomes uh, a, a mere moralism. But uh, you have to realize that great conduct, okay, great conduct is the expression of great belief. In other words, uh, Paul is saying you got to live something in order to receive something. This is not something that has just happened by happenstance, but 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 uh, there were great pains and great stakes were taken in order to bring this inheritance to the church. And so because of that, because of the price that Jesus paid, because of all that he had to go through, then don't think that uh, we're just going to receive it just because we, we think we claim it. It doesn't happen like that. There, you, have, you and I have to be able to live something in this life. We have to be able to be dedicated and committed to the, the, the life of, 
a, a, a Christian in order to receive this inheritance that the Lord has provided for us. And so we're not going to receive it. It didn't happen on the flowery bed of ease. We're not going to receive it on a flowery bed of ease. And so uh, the word grace, which is seldom used in this epistle, in comparison with its frequent reiteration in other epistles of Paul's, the idea and the reality of complete salvation by the grace of God are central in the whole exposition in this book of Colossians. Chapter 3, uh, verse 1, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are before you, which are above where Christ sits on the right hand of the majesty on high. And then he says, set your affections on things above. Not on things of this earth, but our affections should be set on things above, things that are in heaven. And not things on this earth. You know, sometimes we can get so tied up with things on the earth that we forget about what the Lord has done for us and what he has provided for us, which is in heaven. And then uh, if you turn over to chapter number four of the book of Colossians, uh, uh, he tells us here due to, uh, where is it? Epiphrase, verse number 12 who is one of you, a servant in Christ, salutes you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. And so you see the, the, the concern and the endearment of the apostle and his concern for the church of Colossae, as it is in all of his churches. This is one of the great burdens that, that, that the apostle Paul had for the churches. And even those that he did not establish, he still had that burden for them. Because he wants them to know that, you know, this is not all to the life that we live. There's more coming after this. You know, and our latter state, you know, you hear this all the time, especially when in testimony time. And, you know, some preachers would say, our latter state is going to be better than our former state. You know, what we're going through right now, you know, it, you know. We, we just got to go through it. But it's not going to determine how it's going to be in, in the future. In the future, we're, we're going to be on the, we're always on the winning side, but we're going to win big when we land in glory. So all of us have an inheritance. I told you, uh, the Lord, he's provided, he's, we're going to have a new name. With this inheritance comes a new name. You know, I love it over here. It says, I have a new name written down in heaven. And it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. And so we're going to have a new name with this new, or with this inheritance of ours. This is at the heart of the answer which Paul gives to the Colossians heresy. A heresy which implied the insufficiency or at best, only partial sufficiency of Christ for complete salvation. Now, you keep in mind that the false teachers, they were telling the people, they say, look, you don't have to do what Paul said do. Uh, and what they were doing, they were taking the gospel and mixing it with the worship of angels or the worship of or using in intermediaries. You know, you don't need anyone. Remember, it was Martin Luther who nailed those 30, 95 theses on the on, on the Romans' door. Says, look, we're saved by faith. And so we didn't need uh, the Pope or we didn't need uh, the Archbishop or anybody to, to stand in the gap for us. The Hebrew writer in chapter uh, 4, verse number 12 says, we can come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in the time of need. And so we didn't need those intermediaries as some religious practice. We didn't need all of that. But we ourselves can come boldly. Though if you've been blood washed, if you've been blood bought, you yourself, you can come boldly to the throne of God. Nobody uh, has to stand in the gap for you. And so 
there, but there's much to be, and not just the false teaching of those back in the day of Paul, but even today, even today, we have to be aware of false teaching because, uh, you know, don't, don't let anybody cheat you out of your inheritance. Don't let anybody tell you that you don't need all of that. But we found out over the years that not only do we need what we have, but we need that and more. And all of this adds up and leads to our inheritance. So there's so much to be aware of. And, and, and all the devil wants is someone to venture off and become isolated somewhere out there, out there surfing on social media so he can, so he can put some uh, some false, a false thought in your mind and in your heart. And once it does that, uh, if we linger there, if we sit there and we listen to it, then it, it can become detrimental to our spiritual health and well-being. And so Paul's final petition for the Colossians is that they may acknowledge God's goodness to them in their joyful thankfulness. And so the, the full knowledge of God's will, which is manifesting itself in good works, uh, it, in growth and in moral stature and in steadily increasing inward power, it leads us to offer perpetual thanks to the God whose grace makes this spiritual progress possible giving thanks unto God who had made us meet or made us fit or has equipped us to become partakers of the inheritance of the saints and light. Some have given it to the notion that uh, since uh, there is a, uh, since there is a uh, saints and light, there's a possibility that there also are some saints in darkness. And, and typically, we, if you don't have the truth of God's word, then yes, there is some darkness that is lingering there. But when you receive the light, walk in the light. Because God is light. And so we need to know what is the full, the fullness of God's will. You know, I'm of, of the persuasion, and I hope you are too, that uh, the Lord doesn't want us to be ignorant to, uh, to his will. He doesn't want us to be ignorant to the word of God. But uh, all of us, all of us should be scholars in the word of God, all of us. But it takes a steady diet of the study of God's word. You know, you just can't read over it and read it, but you have to study the word of God. Because when you're studying it, it gets, it gets embedded down in your sanctified soul. And so Paul, he says, you know, the reality and uh, the spirit of joy and thanksgiving is itself the final mark of spiritual progress. It is worth noting also that the giving of thanks is related particularly to our consciousness. All that God has done for us, all that he's laid out. There should be a, there should be a praise of thanksgiving in our hearts, continual praise of thanksgiving. There should never be a time when, when we're unthankful for what God has done for us but he has provided for us an inheritance. And this, 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 this inheritance is going to blow our minds. You know, what we have now is only a down payment. But when we receive the full possession of it, when we receive the fullness of, uh, of the down payment that we have now, it's going to blow our minds. You know, then we'll know, even as also we're known. Hallelujah. And so what I want to do, I want to uh, compare some things. You know, uh, back in the Old Testament, they had uh, the, the tribes of Israel, 
they had their inheritance. They received them. And uh, as they were coming out of uh, Egypt, if you remember, uh, God had commanded Moses to uh, take them to a land where they could have an inheritance. You know, they've been slaved down in Egypt for over 400 years, and, and God finally brings them out by the hand of Moses. And, you know, the strange thing, here's the thing. Moses, the leader of the pack, was not able to cross over into the inherited land that God was giving to the children of Israel. All of those who were 20 years old and upward, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness, they did not receive the inheritance that God had for them. Only two individuals that came out of Egypt who were over the age of 20 or 20 or over, these only two individuals were able to cross over into the land of their inheritance because they came back with the good report that what God had promised them, what God had said, they were able to go and get and defeat the enemy. <clears throat> and so what happens is Moses sent 12 spies over into the land to spy out the, to spy out the land. And of course, all that God had told them, it was true. But you, you know the story. 10 of those spies came back with a bad report. Oh, we look like grasshoppers in their eyes. You know, we, we can't, we, there's no way we can defeat them. But Joshua and Caleb stood up against the 10 and said, we're well able. And because of that, they're the only two who were 20 years old and upward who entered the land of promise as God had promised it to them. In chapters 14 through 19 of the book of Joshua, we see how God had distributed uh, the land to the, Old, to the Old Testament saints, to Israel. And actually it started in, verse, uh, in chapter 13. In chapter 13, uh, verse number 15, Reuben receives his inheritance, or the family of Reuben receives their inheritance according to their families. Verse 24, and Moses gave inheritance unto the tribe of Gad. Verse 29 of chapter 13, and Moses gave inheritance unto the tribe of Manasseh. In chapter, uh, chapter 13, verse 33, there was no inheritance for the tribe of Levi. Levi being the priestly, uh, the priestly tribe. Remember, they did all of the, the, the spiritual service they did all of the tabern tabernacle work, all of the temple work for the entire nation of Israel. And instead of them receiving an inheritance, what they did receive were certain cities to live in, along with their, their cattle and their flock and all. And those cities that the, that the Levites lived in, they were called the cities of refuge. That was significant back then because uh, if anyone had committed a crime, and if they could get to the city of refuge and stay there until the high priest of that city died, then they were freed of the crime that they had committed. That's where you find, uh, who was that, that, that stepped out of the city of refuge, Abner. Abner stepped out, when he stepped out, he was smitten. And the Bible records these words, died Abner like a fool died. Had, had he only stayed in the city of refuge, the man could have lived. In chapter 14 of the book of Joshua, uh, we see where the land was divided by light. In chapter 15, uh, verse number one, you see the inheritance of Judah. In chapter 15, verse 13, uh, the inheritance of Caleb. Remember, I talked about Caleb Sunday. Caleb was promised uh, some land by Moses. And Caleb said, I was 40 years old when Moses promised me that land. And here he is now, 80 years old, 40 years later. He said, I'm just as strong now as I was when the Moses first promised it to me. And he made the declaration, give me my mountain. And so Caleb received a, an inheritance. In chapter 16, uh, the inheritance of Joseph. Joseph, 
Joseph. Joseph received an inheritance. Verse number five, Ephraim received the inheritance. Chapter 17, verse one, Manasseh received the inheritance. Now, Manasseh, it talks about the half tribe of Manasseh. Remember, it was Manasseh, I believe Reuben and Gad received their inheritance on the other side of the Jordan. However, look at this though. Just because they received their inheritance on the other side of Jordan, those men, those soldiers still had to go out and help the other Israelites fight the enemy until they had conquered their lands and their inheritance. Then they could go back to their inheritance on the other side of Jordan. See, God had this thing set up so that they've been down in Egypt for over 400 years and they come out of Egypt. God says, it's time for y'all to rest. They've been down there, they've been slaving down in Egypt for over 400 years. And now God wants to give them some rest. He wants to give them their own land, a land that flows with milk and honey, a land that uh, where they didn't have to build any houses. They didn't have to plant any vineyards. They didn't have to plant any olive vines. They didn't have to do anything. All they had to do was just go in and possess the land, possess their inheritance. That sounds similar to us, right? All we got to do is keep on living, right? And after we, after this life is over, all we got to do is go in and possess our inheritance, the fullness of our inheritance. In chapter 18 of Joshua, verse number 11, Benjamin receives an inheritance. Chapter 19, verse 1, Simeon, the families of Simeon received their inheritance. Verse number 10, the family of Zebulun received their inheritance. In verse number 17 of chapter 19, the family of Issachar received their inheritance. Verse 24, the family of Asher received their inheritance. Verse number 32, the family of Naphtali received their inheritance. Verse number 40, the family of Dan receives their inheritance. Chapter uh, 19, verse 49, the family of Joshua receives their inheritance. When they had made an end of dividing the land for inheritance by their coast, the children of Israel gave an inheritance to Joshua, the son of Nun, among them. According to the word of the Lord, they gave him the city which he asked, even timnath Sirah in Mount Ephraim, and he built the city and dwelt therein. These are the inheritances which Eleazar, the priest, and Joshua, the son of Nun, and the heads of the fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel divided for an inheritance by lot in Shiloh before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. So they made an end of dividing the country. And so you see how God has set this thing up where his people, he's not going to leave them with nothing. He's going to give them something and give them rest and give them peace. And this is really what God wanted to do for them. Uh, but through all of this, they still did not drive out all of the adversary, all of the enemy. And they became, they became thorns in the sides of the Israelites. But yet they still went in and they possessed the land that God had given them. God has, has qualified us to share in the inheritance with the saints and light. Our Father has, has made us worthy of the high destiny to which he calls us. You know, and that's an honor to be, to be named a child of God. In the, in the time that we live, to be named a child of God. God sets high honor and priority on us. And, and, and because of that, he's not going to leave us not having anything, but rather he has made for us and established for us an inheritance with those who are the saints in light. He has made us meet 
or he's made us suitable, or he has made us capable, or he has made us competent. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God. And he has qualified us uh, to be ministers of the new covenant. Now you might say, well, you know, I'm not a minister. Yes, you are too. You are a minister because you are one who, 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 uh, who is handling the, the, the ministry of reconciliation. It is the business of each and every one of us who have been born again to engage ourselves in the ministry of reconciliation. which simply means help others to become saved like you are. That's all. Just help others. Help others. Share the gospel with others, with your family, with your friends, with your relatives, uh, with anybody, somebody that you meet out on the street. Share the gospel with them because all of us are ministers of reconciliation. We're not rewarded for our merits, but rather God in his grace had made us worthy of entering into his presence by forgiving our sins and transforming our nature. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated or transferred us into the kingdom of God's dear son. The way that we were walking, we're not walking like that anymore. God has done something on the inside of us. He, he, has, he has given us another nature. Yes, we still, we're still human. We still have human nature, but God has put some divine nature on the inside of us. And that divine nature grows as the more word or the more, or the, or the, the greater our relationship is with God. That divine nature on the inside that he's given us through the power of the Holy Ghost, it grows as we take on a better and, a, and a, a, a closer relationship with God, and we do that also by the word of God. The word is a light unto my pathway and a lamp unto my feet. And so we need the word of God in order to grow, in order to, to have a better relationship, because if you don't know anything about the word, you don't know much about God. Relationship is established through not just the sanctification of his spirit, but through the word of God. So we're not rewarded for our merits, but rather God in his grace has made us worthy of entering into his presence by forgiving our sins and transforming our nature. The inheritance of the saints, or uh, as one version puts it, uh, instead of inheritance, they call it the lot, the L-O-T of the saints is translated inheritance, but uh, it means lot. And lots are assigned portions or allotments. As it was back to, as we read in the book of Joshua. They were assigned portions or allotments of land. And, you know, one of the things that, uh, that you also see in the Old Testament, and in fact, you even see it in, well, you don't see it much more now, but uh, back during some of the wars, uh, that the idea of the Old Testament story of the promised land that was divided by lot among the tribes of Israel as a part of a tribal allotment was assigned to an individual also. And sometimes uh, soldiers of war, sometimes they, after the war was over, they would stay back. They would, they would hang back in, in a land that they have traveled through or had fought, fought over, and they would stay there, and they would stay there and live there. And that particular lot was given to them for them to build a home or build a family there. You know, Thomas Nelson says uh, this, and I quote. He says, when the word is used of the promised land, it does not merely refer to what a person wills to his children. Rather, God, the owner of the entire world, has granted his people a specific parcel of ground. 
he has fixed its boundaries and promised to deliver it to them. However, the concept of Israel's inheritance transcends a simple association with the land. David and Jeremiah both affirm that God himself is the real inheritance of his people. God's people can find joy and fulfillment in their relationship with God. Nothing in this world can offer as an inheritance compares with God himself. So this world don't have anything that it can compare with the inheritance that God himself has, unquote. And so the Lord has done so much for us to bring to us this idea of the inheritance. And now that uh, the idea has been spiritualized, and, and what it is, the lot of the saints is no earthly territory. We know that. Our lot is it's not an earthly territory. You know, we, we look for our ancestors, our parents, our grandparents, our ancestors. We look for them to give us an earthly territory. But that's not the inheritance from God. That's the inheritance from our ancestors. And so that idea or what God has prepared for us is now spiritualized. The scales weigh heavily on the side of God. Now I'll tell you, I would rather have the inheritance from God than to have anything that comes from this earth. And so the scales, they weigh heavily on, on the side of God. Um, one other thing I want to show you before we close up tonight. Let me see if I can share this with you. Uh, now, when you compare the Old Testament uh, with the New Testament, and you see who inherits the inheritance from the Old Testament, as we just read, all of these tribes and, and a couple of people in here, a couple of individuals, actually one, two, three, three individuals in here receive the inheritance in the Old Testament. Whereas in the New Testament, whose members, uh, or rather who is the church, and some of the requirements for us in the church is, whose members walk worthy of the Lord in all pleasing. These are some contingencies. If we, if we plan to, in, uh, to inherit the, the inheritance that God has for us, we have to make sure that, that we as members of the church triumphant, whose members walk worthy of the Lord in uh, all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Now, that might seem like a tall order, but, but if you really love the Lord, if you really, if you really want to be saved, then you don't mind doing this. That means you're going to get along with everybody. You're going to love everybody. You're going, you're, going, you're, going to be, you're going to do right by everybody. You're going to forgive. You're going to do all that is necessary to make these contingencies here Work on your behalf because you're going to work on. And so while the Old Testament saints, they, they received lots and allotments of land, whereas we're not receiving land, but rather we're receiving God himself because God himself is our inheritance. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. We are, you know, and really we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. And so we, whatever God owns, we own. I mean, it doesn't get in the plane of the net. Whatever God's own, we own. Whatever Christ Jesus owns, we own. 
And so for the next several weeks, we're going to be looking at uh, the, our inheritance because our inheritance, it belongs to us. You know, it doesn't belong to uh, the adversary. And, and I'm going to tell you, yeah, he's going to try to cheat you out of your, your inheritance, but don't, don't let him take advantage of you. You know, you see him coming, you know, rebuke him, rebuke him. Tell him that the Lord rebuke him. But don't let no demon, no devil, no man or no woman cheat you and me out of our inheritance because our latter end is going to be far greater than our former end. What we have right now is only a down payment. But the Lord, remember, he, he, he has already paid the price. He has already established everything that is necessary as we leave out of here and go to glory with him. And so let us keep these things in mind as we go, as we go. All right, so uh, I'm open up. Are there any questions? I see uh, Ronnie Sanders, is that you? You got a question? Yeah, so praise the Lord, everybody. Praise, praise the Lord. Um, I'm looking at your uh, screen and it says, uh, no inheritance for Levi. Uh, yeah. uh, are you talking about land? Because yeah, the land. Bible, yeah, I'm not about to say because the Bible says that they had an inheritance. Their inheritance was the tithes, the ten percent of everything that every, all the other tribes uh, gathered. That was their inheritance, the tithing. So I just wanted. To, I, I I figured you was talking about the land. So I just yeah. wanted to make sure you say that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was the land. Remember again. They 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 received the uh, the cities the cities of refuge that's where they live. Okay, but yeah, but all, all of the other tribes uh, they bought that ten percent in, and that's 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 what the uh, Levites ate off of. That's what that's how they were fed. That's how they lived. Any more questions? Any more questions? All right, if not, let us pray. Father, we thank you so much once again for this hour that we spent together. And Lord, we ask your blessings upon us, oh God, each and every day, Lord. Oh God, remember those who are looking this way for prayer. Remember those, oh God, who, oh God, who have lost loved ones. Continue to pray for those who are bereaving. Lord, help them, oh God, give them strength in this time and hour. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. I just want to say a couple.